So this is our little camper. It's a Passport by Keystone. We bought this about a year ago. Uh, we were one of the many families uh, mid-pandemic that uh, decided to try camping. Uh, the layout is a 239 ml. It's a great little camper. Uh, front Murphy bed and then bunks in the rear and just a little bathroom and dinette. No slide. So it's nice and light and it tows really easy. Uh, we've really enjoyed it but it is a little lacking in features. It's a 2018 and newer ones have a few more features in them. And one of those things that I kind of wish it had was a shoe garage. After uh, camping in it for about a year, um, what I've noticed is the kids just come right in and they kick their shoes off and the shoes, <laughs> the shoes stay right here. Uh, a lot of newer campers will have a shoe garage somewhere in the, near the entry. And I thought about putting it down there, but that's trimmed out real nice. Uh, there is a lot of room in there under the couch, but I don't want to. I don't want to ruin that. Um, I don't think it'll look look right if I rework that and uh, mess up all the trim. But the dinette uh, isn't really trimmed out. It's kind of kind of flimsy. Should be easy to cut. And I think I can rework this so that I can have shoes stored in here while we're using it. All right, so to help me accomplish this little goal, I went ahead and got some material from the local big box store. And I managed to find some pre-finished stuff that was eh, close enough to the current color. I think this was called Gunstock. So I don't, I don't know what color this is called, but it's I figured it looked pretty decent. It'd be a lot easier than trying to find the right stain and finish it myself, but um, it was cheap. I think I spent like 30 bucks for all this stuff. Of course, a year ago, it pro <laughs> probably would have been like $15. <laughs> but I don't buy lumber very much, so I don't know for sure. So inside the dinette, what I'm going to have to do is kind of frame out the inside of the garage. So these, these supports right here go up and they support the top of the dinette. Uh, this, of course, supports the seat. So if I, and they're stapled together right here. So if I cut these out, it's gonna lose its support. So I need to make more structure right and around, along here. And I think it'll be fine if I do that. And then I'll, what I wanna do is make some is structure in here as well. Might have to get more wood for that. And then enclose the garage so we can store stuff in here and then on top of the garage and around it and everything else. Um, I think by just cutting this and leaving a hole and leaving it open, we might lose some storage uh, when we travel. I don't know, maybe not, maybe it'll be okay. I guess I could try it first, but uh, I think in the long run, I'm gonna want this enclosed. All right, so I got a bunch of pieces cut out. I think I know what I'm gonna do. Uh, I've got to make a structure across here. And what I've done is I've, I'm gonna make my opening six inches tall. So I got a couple six inch legs here. And then I'm gonna lay a cross piece in like that. And this will be my structure. I'll tack everything together here, 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 and here. And then when that's done, I've got some, some more structure I can put in between uh, these braces here and here. And I'll tuck them down. I'll go ahead and tuck them down in there like that and nail them in place. And then what, what these short pieces will do these short pieces will allow me to nail trim to uh, the out to the outside of this once I get the hole cut out. So I'll lay this stuff in here, get it tacked in place, and I'll use that structure as the template. And then I think if I just use a couple nails, I'll just I'll be able to pull it back apart. So I'll tack everything in, draw it, draw it out, and then cut everything out with my saw. And that's probably going to be the next challenge is. <laughs> To cut this stuff nicely, not ruin it, uh, make it split or shatter. And I've also got to get this out. So this is the bottom of the dinette and it's screwed right to the floor. I think what I can do, or what I'm hopeful I can do, is that I can take each of these screws out and maybe drive wedges underneath the corners and raise it up a little bit. And that'll allow me to get my oscillating saw in there and just make some cross cuts and remove that structure. And then I think to cover these holes, I've got a piece of trim that's the same color as this. And I'll just lay that on the floor and ch -ch -ch tack it in with my air nailer.
Okay, that worked pretty good. Now just to decide where I want to make the cut. Well, I know I don't want to make this cut here, but I got to figure out where I want to make it right here. Uh, thinking about putting more structure in right here and then uh, just trimming around that. I think that would be wide enough. Okay, so I've got wedges up under the structure, so I'm going to try to notch this, or rather just cut it, remove it, and i got to make another cut down there with my oscillating tool. This thing's pretty handy. Uh, I've had good luck with it. I'm a little scared of this, though, because I don't want to damage the floor. Okay, it's free. That actually wasn't too bad. Got into the shim a little bit, but that's why I had it there, so I wouldn't damage the floor. Now I'll make a cut over here. Okay, so I made both my cuts on the floor. It's freed it up quite a bit. The sides are still a little, there might be a little bit of a connection right there, but I think if I cut the rest of this out and just whack it with a hammer, it'll probably break off. And then I can trim it up with uh, a handsaw or something. And I went ahead and started cutting with my oscillating tool around the line that I've made. And it's actually working pretty well. Uh, I think I'm just gonna keep on doing that. Um, I need to put some earplugs in though, because it's really loud. But it's doing a good job, it's cutting very precisely, and it's not damaging the back side. Well, not too bad anyway, but that's what the trim is for. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep on with this and see how it turns out. I'm at the point of no return, so it doesn't matter at this point. Whew, done. No 
Now I need to get the vacuum in here. All right, I got my area cut out. I got everything cleaned up. Now I just need to put my cross beam in, tack it in place. And then I've got these uh, pieces that were cut out here, and they're perfect. Just sit right here to nail the trim to. Uh, but I got a, the trim isn't going to overlap these all the way, so they'll be somewhat exposed. Um, but I think I've got some other trim I can lay over them, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So these I can pretty much put in any time. So I guess I'll just get this tacked in place, and then I'll uh, screw it in for final assembly. I got inch and a half wood screws and I'll just run them in. I drilled some pilot holes ahead of time so I don't split the wood. So overall the cut worked out pretty well. It, there's a couple spots where there's a little bit of damage. I think I'll just patch those with some glue. And I think for the most part my trim will cover it up. But this is moving around a little bit, so I'm gonna tack it in a couple places. So this is what the trim will look like. I got it to go around the corner like that. And I wanna make a threshold here. So I could I could do it this way and then bring the threshold up like that. I think that would look kind of weird. Also, this part is exposed. And what my wife suggested that was actually a good idea was just put another piece of trim on the back side like that. And that's not so bad. Um, but I don't, don't know if I like this here. So that should really be in line with the edge, edge of the dinette here. And I think what I'll have to do, just so that it doesn't look totally weird, because that doesn't look quite right, I'll have to, I'll have to notch, I'll have to notch the trim right here to go around this piece. I don't think that'll be too hard to do with a, a little coping saw or something. So I think that's the way I'll do it. Um, thinking I should get this down in place first, and then do the rest of the trim. I got quite a bit of this stuff to use, so if I make a mistake, it shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, I got my trim all mocked up. I got a strip down at the bottom here on the floor, tacked in place, and I've made my trim all the way around. I was able to kind of notch that. It looks pretty good. I got this guy in place. It's just sitting here, and I got, got that side too, and I think it looks pretty good. I just got to tack it in, and uh, I might call it a day. <clears throat> this uh, has taken the bulk of the afternoon, and uh, I took many well-deserved breaks and I had lunch and uh, I had about, oh, five iterations to get this right. I don't know what my problem is, but I'm really bad about doing corners when I'm doing trim. Um, you know, measure twice, cut once. I measure five times and, and cut like 10. It just doesn't work out very well for me, but I finally got it. I think we're up to about 14 bucks on this this joint right here, this this piece of trim. But I think overall it turned out pretty well. Um, I still got to get some trim around there, so I'm going to go ahead and tack this in place and see how that goes.
Okay, here's the final result. It's all done. Turned out pretty darn good. So now when I come in the door, I could just kick my shoes off. Shove them right in there. Out of the way. And then the kids can do that too. Although they'll probably forget and just leave them right here on the rug. But it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I didn't do anything underneath to enclose it. I just figured this was good enough for now. If storage runs into an issue, then I'll, I'll come up with another design. But overall, I'm pretty happy how it turned out. Yep. Nice.